Basically, they're good people. It's a cripple critic, and uh, yeah, Pokemon Go. It's a thing, huh? It's a huge thing. Everyone's talking about it, everybody's playing it, and yeah, it's pretty crazy. You know, I'll admit, when I was a kid, I was obsessed with Pokemon. I loved the Japanese video games, you know, I traded the Pokemon cards. I Hell, even when I was in the third grade, I made a Pokemon club with my friends where we just talked about Pokemon and played it. So yeah, I was a big fan. But, you know, I grew up and I kind of always thought of it as a kid's game. Uh, I know that for most kids it never really grew out of, you know, style, but I never really expected it to get popular again, at least with adults. Boy, was I wrong. But it does look like it's doing a lot of good. Despite the occasional idiot that crashes their car to find a Pokemon, it really does feel like more and more people around the world are getting connected because of this game. And people you wouldn't ever expect to play video games are playing this game. I remember I, I got friends and family that talked to me about it and, I, and they never play games and if you can get people to play games who never do it, I'm all for that. Also, this is my first attempt at reviewing a mobile game, and I won't say that I'm, you know, I will continue to do this, but I've played a few mobile games, and maybe I'll try it later. But with so many people talking about Pokemon Go, I really wanted to like review it, and maybe give a different spin to the this type of review. Maybe talk about things that people aren't talking about within the game. So the controls, yeah, I guess there is some subtitles in the game, although it's a game that has no spoken dialogue uh, because it's supposed to accommodate a lot of different players around the world and they wanted to make it easy to translate, so I guess that's good. Um, the interface is pretty basic for a mobile game, you just tap the screen to do a variety of things, catch Pokemon, click on items, things like that. Uh, occasionally you will have to swipe kind of fast or tap repeatedly for a while, but it's mostly doable in that way. So, uh, the accessibility in this game. It sucks. It really does. And it's mostly because the game revolves around traveling, physically traveling around your neighborhood at the very least to catch Pokemon. And yes, technically you can catch Pokemon at your house, but pretty quickly you will exhaust all your resources and have to leave. You have to go to Poke Shops and replenish your inventory, and that requires you to travel. Now I know this might not seem like much, but for a disabled gamer it's huge, because it's hard for us to travel. Use me for an example. Yes, I do leave the house occasionally, but not as often as most people, and when I do, I have to have someone else help me, and most disabled gamers are in the same boat. Companies like Niantic really need to keep things like this in mind when they're trying to make a game wildly accessible to everyone. Now I understand the game is sort of made to get people to go out and be more active, but I don't think it should have ever been a requirement. It should have been optional, or at the very least, have some sort of compromise within the interface. I'm not gonna lie, I'm using an emulator to play this game. Yep. I scoured the internet and found some people that figured out a way to bypass the traveling. Uh, it's sort of a fake GPS system that allows you to move your character to different places in the world, like you're traveling there. And you know what? I really don't feel that bad about it. Because if you make a game inaccessible to me, I'm going to do anything I can to play it. Now I'm not going to name the emulator because I don't want the creators to get in trouble. But they have allowed me to actually enjoy the game. It's never a good thing that a customer has to use a third-party program in order to play the game. Never. Despite all these setbacks, with the emulator's help, I am now able to use all of the game mechanics, not just a few of them. So I guess I'll talk about the game mechanics now. Uh, if you are familiar with the old Pokemon games on the Game Boy, it won't really help you. Uh, there are, you know, you're, you're catching Pokemon still, but not in the same way. It's more about timing than it's weakening Pokemon. Uh, later in the game, you are able to use this item called a berry to make it easier to catch Pokemon. I think it's level 8 when that starts to happen. In Pokemon Go, uh, it seems like the only time you can actually fight your Pokemon is when you're challenging team leaders. It's also the only time that Pokemon types seem to come into play. Uh, like the old uh, handheld Pokemon games, uh, fire types, you know, hurt grass, and water is weak to electricity. 
with catching different Pokemon types in the wild, I've heard before the game was made that, you know, environmental factors and weather would uh, affect the types you would find, but in my experience, that really isn't the case. Uh, in one area, I could find several different types without ever to move much. I've heard they may introduce a mechanic that allows you to fight other players directly, but for now it hasn't been implemented yet. Like I said before, most of the game is just about catching Pokemon, and you can enjoy the game by just doing that, but there are other things you can do. You can raise your character's level by catching Pokemon, and like I said, challenging dim leaders. Also going to Pokestops, where you can gain items that help you boost your Pokemon, or lures that bring Pokemon to you. Pokestops are usually uh, landmarks or buildings in your town. For me, they're usually churches for some reason or another. Other things you can do is power up your Pokemon and make them stronger. You do this by giving them something called Stardust, which you gain by catching more Pokemon. Powering up your Pokemon is essential in, if you want to fight gym leaders. Of course, I haven't been able to feed any yet. You can also evolve certain Pokemon using something called Candy, but you usually need a lot of it. The type of candy you need is unique to each Pokemon, so it's actually useful to capture the same Pokemon over and over. There are also Poke Eggs that has other Pokemon, and uh, you need to use these things called incubators to hatch them, and you can find them at Pokestops or when you level up. To hatch these eggs, it requires you to walk a certain amount of kilometers, and I've heard that the eggs that require you to walk the farthest give you more rare Pokemon. These other mechanics do all seem to facilitate catching Pokemon, but I think it gives you a little bit more variety within the game. So I'll admit, once I got the emulator to help me actually play the game, I really enjoyed it. I understand now why it got to be so popular. You can spend hours catching Pokemon and it can be really fun. That's the thing though, you should never have to use an emulator to play a game. Games should be accessible to as many people as possible. It's just good business. There are millions of disabled gamers out there, and companies should realize that limiting us is just going to hurt them. But hey, like I said, it's great to see so many people enjoy something that I used to love a lot when I was a kid. It makes me feel nostalgic. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, I'll see you later.